views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Welcome. Welcome back for those of you that were listening to the last hour. Boy, we are fired up and ready to go. Uh, We've got a great show planned for you today. Uh, Friend, colleague, my co-host, Dr. Friedemann Chow, is in the house. I'm very, very excited about what we're going to talk about today. But let me give you a shout out to Mr. Benny. Hello, Mr. B. How are you doing? Doing well. Once again, Pat, thank you for asking. Yeah, what is it? That, I said like four to six feet in the snow. I was telling Dr. Friedman about that. And I, I, my friends tried to go skiing on Monday, and there were so many people there. There was actually no parking. Can you imagine? Yeah, the word got out, and everyone's going to take full advantage. We're a little behind the winter season here in Washington State, so they wanted to get up to the mountains. Yeah, that's it. Get up to the mountains. And I'm still, I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to do a little snowshoeing. I'm thinking about this Friday, little snowshoeing, quit, quit the work in a little bit early in the day, you know, get out there and, you know, it takes me an hour to put my snowshoe stuff on with that, with all my gear and everything. It takes me about an hour to get dressed for that ordeal. Uh, and then I get out there for 20 minutes, but it's worth every 20 minutes. Yeah, get that heart rate up. It's always good for you. <laughs> Got to get that heart rate up. My heart rate gets up just the thought of getting out there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Today, the Empowered Self Series, Part 2, The Three Most Common Ways We Give Our Power Away. Oh, I just got to take a deep sigh right here. <laughs> uh, how often have I been doing that one? And as a matter of fact, I was just talking about it during the last show. So this is going to be like a very interesting show today. Dr. Friedemann Chow is my co-host. He's been a co-host with me for a number of years now. Works with countless people all over the world. And, you know, somebody that, and he and I were talking about this, you know, we do these shows because we've, got, we've gone down the pathway of living a life that is disempowered. Whether it's taking a career that you really didn't want to take going to school to a school you didn't want to go to, being in a relationship that just doesn't fit you, or simply doing things on a day-to-day basis that you just don't want to do, right? How many movies in a lifetime have you ever been to that you just didn't really want to see? Or dinners that you didn't want to order that meal? I mean, it goes on and on and on. But thank goodness Dr. Friedman and Schaub has said yes to his true calling. Thank goodness he didn't go down the path that other people wanted him to go down. And as a result of that, I get to chat with him on a regular basis, the founder of Cellular Wisdom, who he he has become, you know, with origins from the Black Forest of Germany to the streets of Seattle to speaking with people all over the world to share what it's like to break through those thoughts, emotions, and beliefs that hold us back. He's recognized in the world for his message, the power of his teachings, and his ability to help people break through things that they just have not been able to break through. He is also the best-selling author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution, and you can go to that website, fearandanxietysolution.com. Award-winning book did things that people didn't think he could do. First-time author, published a book in record time. Uh, And people say, how did you do that? Well, 
if you're not practicing the principles you teach others, you're not going to be able to do that. So this show today is to share what this means for all of us. Are you ready for this? It's to share what we learn about ourselves, what we do when we give our power away. I hope today you're going to hear something in the show uh, that gets you to stop and ask, how often have you felt powerless in your life, victimized by people or circumstances, drained by obligations and expectations, stuck in the situation that, you know, felt out of your control to change Feeling powerless can happen to all of us, and trust me, it's happened to both Dr. Schaub and me. Actually, almost happened to me last week. It's one of the most common causes for anxiety and depression. So today we're going to talk about this and much more. Dr. Friedman, thank you for this show. Welcome to it. Thank you for having me. I always look forward to our time together on the airwaves. You know what? I was talking during the last hour about a situation that I put myself in, and I almost became completely disempowered and got on a path that was not going to work for me. And it had to do, and let's talk about this, because you were on a pathway to become a doctor, weren't you? You know, that was a pathway. Now, let's talk about that, if we would, for a minute. You know, you went on a pathway that you didn't necessarily want to be on. So did I. But what was it? What, what, what was it that, that had that light bulb go on to get you into the direction of your life's work? Well, you know, I mean, I, I played being a doctor for a while, so I actually, you know, felt that this was for a while at least, you know, my destiny to go into cardiology and, uh, and basically you know, follow the desire of my parents who were both doctors and for a lack of really resistance internally because my other dream was so unrealistic that, you know, I didn't really see a way to get there, which was to become an actor. I just said, okay, now let's try first, you know, becoming a doctor. I like people. I love helping. So in that regard, it wasn't really such a, you know, bad choice. But after you know a few years in cardiology, I I had this literally wake up call, which was something inside of me making me wake up in a panic, in an anxiety, in a cold sweat, and I only heard this voice inside of me telling me, "You're gonna live like this for another thirty years," and just that thought made me really, really you know scared because I. I felt there was something not quite right. I felt that this path wasn't really fulfilling. You know, on the surface, it looks all wonderful, but what internally happened was just that I felt this is not really my calling. The way medicine is done, the way I just have basically five to ten minutes per patient, the way we are just trying to put people into little boxes and giving them a pill and shoving them off, that was just not really the way I wanted to help people. So something inside of me really woke me up at that time. And then, you know, there were some other detours I took, but it led me eventually to that what I really love to do, which is to empower people. And, you know, looking back just at the, the state of disempowerment and how common it is and how common it is with people that are, ill, that have physical problems, that have problems with their heart, it really makes you wonder if the state of disempowerment is not one of the major root causes for physical, but also, of course, emotional challenges and illnesses we are dealing with. And this is why this is such a a dear topic to me, to really help people to understand how they lose their power. And of course, how can we get it back? Well, you know, one of the things, let's just give a real example of this. Let's give a couple. I mean, I was talking about you a little bit in the path you went on, and certainly I had the same thing. You know, if for me, it was kind of now I set on a path to do what I love. That's what I'm doing today. But in my life, Dr. Friedman, I mean, if you just go to school like you did and you become a doctor, people expect you to actually go and practice, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Same thing with me. You know, here I am, I go to school, I get this this degree, 
And people look at you and they think, wait a minute, why aren't you getting like a job? Why aren't you getting a real job? Why aren't you going working for some consulting firm or doing this or doing that, making a lot of money? Well, I never had an answer to the why. I just knew it didn't feel right. And so we go through our lives every day in jobs we don't like, bosses that abuse us, probably relationships we wish could be better. And and I want to ask you, doesn't all of this take its toll, and how does it manifest for us? Well, it definitely takes its toll. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's certainly something that I think is not just related to us adults. I think it starts, you know, with children feeling disempowered and feeling that they have no choice, and it just continues from there. Uh, the way I think it really manifests itself is that people, when they feel disempowered, often just feel the only way to continue in this rut is numbing out. And, mm-hmm. uh, and that is why so many people that I talk to that uh, really feel like, you know, I need to change, tell me that before they made the decision to change, to really become proactive, to address their depressions or the anxiety, that they felt like living on autopilot, that they just felt mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm going through the days, I'm, I'm looking for little things that feed me, that, you know, make life a little interesting. But at the end, I just feel like I am basically on this conveyor belt and I'm going down, you know, life until... At some point, uh, you know, it's going to end. And, and that autopilot place is one of the major effects of feeling powerless. You just don't see yourself as someone who can actually shape life the way you want it. And, you know, not everyone has to necessarily change your job. And, you know, when you're empowered now, quit your family, you know, move to an <laughs> island, whatever. What we are talking about are really the patterns of disempowerment, these these three most common patterns that all of us, you and I included, have practiced very well. They have served us at times, but when they get out of balance and out of control, they really leave us basically drained and, and powerless, and, and that's what we want to be aware of. You know, this is really kind of, you know, in, in today's show, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. We're going to take a break right now. Um, Dr. Friedman Child is my very special guest today. We're talking about the Empowered Self Series, Part 2, the three most common ways we give our power away. Dr. Friedman Child, you can go to CellularWisdom.com or you can go to the Fear and Anxiety Solution.com. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to talk about, you know, Beyond this connection to anxiety and depression, you know, what are some of the things that are going on in the background? Uh, What are these three things? And are they patterns, things we can change? Uh, Some people believe, uh, I am just programmed, Dr. Schaub, to be a people pleaser. You know what? Born like that, popped out like that, that's just me. I'm, I'm destined to be miserable. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to see how true that statement is. Dr. Friedman and Chab joining me here today on the Dr. Pat Show. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Tune in each Tuesday at noon Pacific and 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com for The Dr. Julie Show, All Things Connected with Dr. Julie Kroll, featuring weekly segments with David Eisen and the Shocker Sound System. Each week, you will journey through infinite possibilities, expand into social potential, and find beautiful beginnings where endings leave off. Change makers from around the world will explore what's emergent about the environment, relationships, health, the arts, education, and the evolution of consciousness. Visit TheDrJulieShow.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. 
What if the world doesn't function the way we've been told? What if we truly can bend the laws of physical reality? What if we can end limitation? What if weird were the coolest thing you could be? And what if it's time for a totally different reality? Are you ready to create it? Are you ready to dream as big as you dare? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything in my life changed for me. This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Gandhi, Galileo, and Aristotle all knew to be true. It's not about the answer. It's about being the question, always. It's about truly being you, whatever that looks like, and changing this world. Is now the time? Start by signing up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. That's beingyouclass.com. What if you are the gift and the change this world requires? Beingyouclass.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information. Tune in each Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 Eastern Time on Transformation Talk Radio to Limelight Radio with Katina Macris. This is an inspirational, cutting-edge radio show educating worldwide listeners on a diversity of Lyme disease-related topics. Each week, Katina will interview some of the world's leaders in health, wellness, spirituality, and human potential. For more information, visit LimeLightRadio.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Dr. Pat Show. Oh, this is so good. Dr. Freedom and Chop joining me here today. The three most common ways we give our power away. Uh, and as I said before, if you want to schedule a session with Dr. Friedman, you can get a free telephone consultation by simply calling his toll-free number, 866-903-6463. That's 866-903-6463. Also, if you have any questions at all today about what it means to be the empowered self and you want to get some help from him live on air, give us a shout, 1-800-930-2819. Go to thefearandanxietysolution.com for more information. Get a copy of his book. Uh, So, Dr. Shout, thank you for joining me here today. You know, we're going to talk about these three most common ways we give away our power. So what are they? Well, you know, in order to understand these three ways, it's important to see also where they come from. You know, and uh, and I think uh, when we, all of us, probably look back into the early years, you know, when we were really dependent on others, when it wasn't about, you know, how empowered can you be when you're just a child, but really more about how can I be safe? How can I feel comfortable? How can I fit in? We all develop these strategies to somehow, you know, make it, to somehow be a part of the the tribe, the family, you know, the schools and to uh, and those three patterns that we are developing are often reflected back to us by our peers or our parents. And it's often interesting, you know, when you talk to people, well, what are you really struggling with when it comes to giving your power away? Whatever they are doing to give their power away, at least, uh, in, you know, to a large extent, they have learned these patterns from their father and their mother. And uh, mm-hmm. these three ways are one of the first ways is avoiding, which is basically, you know, something that we do when we feel that we're not safe, that we are not good enough, that we're going to fail anyhow. I, you know, I just talked to a client who told me that basically his father was such a big personality, you know, a wrestler, a, a football player, just like a really you know, authority, but also at times angry and a little violent. 
And so he felt he could never measure up. So very early in his childhood, he decided, I will just not compete. I will not join the wrestling team. I will quit football because I can never really be as good as he is. And I will always going to fail. And so just to avoid this kind of painful rejection or painful judgment from others or the sense of, again, failing and not being good enough, people avoid the situations that potentially could lead to them. And they make themselves smaller or they avoid other people in general and become more invisible. People that are avoiders are often very sensitive. They really feel the, the judgment and the criticism from others much, much stronger than people that have uh, less sensitivity, that are not so aware of what's going on around them. And, and the way avoiders give their power away is that they basically don't really do what they want to do because they, they stay on the sidelines. They, they are somewhere in a smaller and smaller comfort zone and don't really express themselves fully just because they're afraid that potentially they're going to get hurt. And I think most of us can relate to times in our lives when we did the same thing. And, you know, I, I think this is a great topic, you know, uh, just talking about how avoidance shows up. In, in part, part of the time, don't you think, Dr. Dr. Shell, that, you know, we go through our lives and, and avoidance becomes so normal, we don't even recognize we're avoiding anymore. You see what I'm trying to say? Absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah, because becoming disempowered really has, it, it takes work. You know what yeah. I mean? You, you have to. <laughs> we don't pop out disempowered, right? We pop out screaming because we want something. Well, I don't know if we all pop out screaming. I popped out <laughs> screaming. Um, but if, if we, 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 I wanted you to address this a little bit because I, I think avoidance is one of those things that it happens so often that we, first of all, we don't recognize it. And then it becomes so much part of our pattern, right, that we can't figure out that that's really been the thing. I know this is where your work comes in. This is why you're working with people. But what can you say to help people uh, identify whether or not they're in the avoidance void? Well, it's really about identifying your specific avoidance pattern. And uh, keep in mind, these patterns are not necessarily throughout your entire life. You may be just an avoider in one area of your life. You know, you may be an avoider at work, and so you will never raise your hand in the group meetings, or you will never really volunteer for something special, or you will never say, hey, no, I don't have time to work overtime. I really need to take care of the kids. So all of those things are avoidance patterns. But you can also be a avoider with your spouse and just really try to make everything just perfect so that you don't really get criticized. Or you can be an avoider with your kids by being hypervigilant and trying to just always look for potential danger and this way avoiding them to really get into any kind of precarious situations. Avoidance has a lot of different, uh, you know, faces. Even the face of the rebel is ultimately an avoider, a, re a rebel who never wants to fit in, a rebel who never wants to, you know, rub shoulders with anyone, a rebel who just wants to be separate is ultimately an avoider because that person doesn't really want to compete or belong to a group because that would only mean that you potentially get judged or measured and potentially abandoned or rejected. And so stepping away from this through rebellious behavior is a form of avoidance. So just being aware of what am I doing to actually not fully express myself? Where do I take other people's opinions more important than my own? Where do I actually somewhat contract or or move myself away from what I really want just because I feel it's too difficult, it's too dangerous, it's too hard, nobody can really do it. All these little stories we are telling ourselves, just being aware of that we are actually in avoidance mode can already make a big difference. Well, you know, I mean, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because, you know, so often, you know, when we when we get in these patterns, as you like to call them, and we're going to talk about the other two reasons, 
Um, when we start to accumulate these things, and we and 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 we we don't really have the sense to look at this. And what I mean by sense is the wherewithal, because we're now completely overwhelmed. I mean, we haven't even talked about the other two ways. I mean, this is avoidance was just one way. When we come back from break, uh, Dr. Shaw, I want to talk about the other two because it's kind of like I, it's kind of like growing up in my family. <laughs> one, two, three strikes, you're out. If you got one of these going on, you know how it feels. But how mm-hmm. about if they're all kind of working together? Is it possible to reach up above the cloud? of disempowerment to grab your life back. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, my very special guest today on the show. Uh, go to the fearandanxietysolution.com, lots of information. If you want to call into the show, have a question to get yourself moving in the right direction right now, to say goodbye to disempowerment, give us a shout, 1-800-930-2819. Or you can ask a question by going to the drpatshow.com or TransformationTalkRadio.com. On the right-hand side, ask your question. We will get it on air for you. Stay tuned, everyone. We'll be right back with the Dr. Pat Show. Listen to the Yo! Andrew News Talk Show every Tuesday night at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. More info where to listen? www.yoandrewnts.com slash listen. Don't get your message lost in the mail. Email us with this address, yoandrew at yoandrewnts.com. How about tweet Yo! Andrew at andrewtweetgeo. Taking a picture is easy. Instagram us today at yoandrewnts. Where do you desire to go in life? How do you plan to get there? Are you only looking outside yourself for the answers? What if you use your soul's wisdom to lead the way? So what is the soul and how do you access its wisdom? Soul Suitcase with Victoria Cohen will unpack these questions and help you tap into and trust your own inner voice to solve everyday problems. Your Soul Suitcase is a treasure chest of wisdom inside you waiting to be discovered. Listen to Soul Suitcase on TransformationTalkRadio.com and discover how awakening to your inner voice transforms your life. Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all a healthy space with doctors who care see and listen to the whole you hi this is dr darvish if you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms you will find answers here at holistic medical center our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally we transform lives from within visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404 Psychic World, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern, with John G. Sutton, featuring his special guest, Countess Strella. One of Britain's most respected psychic mediums, John is an internationally published author, poet, and professional clairvoyant. His best-selling books include Psychic Pets, featured with John on the Walt Disney Channel, Animal Planet. Currently, John is the feature editor of the monthly Psychic World, which is the UK's Journal of Spiritualism. He has over 30 years of experience working in the field of paranormal studies. Countess Sterella has an incredible ability to visualize your future in a positive, passionate way. This show offers all Listeners, the chance to call in and speak directly to John or the amazing Countess Torella. You can ask your personal questions about love, career, money, relationships, or whatever is troubling you in this often difficult life. What dreams may come? Join John G. Sutton and Countess Torella to discover your answer. See www.psychicworld.net. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Last 
everybody welcome back what an, uh, you guys should be listening to what we're talking about during the break uh you know i get to like answer dr friedman's question are you an avoider and you know, I'm like, ah, I'm in a hot seat right now. Uh, am I an avoider? I answered the question. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I think I show up as the rebel archetype. I think that's what I've done. And uh, actually, I was a little shocked to hear that the rebel is an avoider. And so I've gotten to think about what are some of the things that I do avoid because uh, I don't know about you, but I do not want to be disempowered. Uh, for those of you out there, if you want to find out more about um, Dr. Friedman, then, uh, yeah, I, Benny, do we have a bunch of callers here? <laughs> We're good, but you can open up the lines. We'll bring them in. All right, 1-800-930-2819. Uh, give us a shout. We will bring you on air. Uh, and, uh, wow, what a great show, Dr. Friedman. Uh, you know, one of the things I, I've said is, yeah, these are the questions we get to ask ourselves because I don't think any of us want to walk around this in power. So you gave us one of the things that uh, causes us to, you know, give away our power. What is the second thing? Well, the second one is something I especially was very good at, which is being the pleaser. And who cannot relate to being the pleaser? You know, the pleaser is the person who basically just makes sure that everyone is okay. And, uh, you know, it's so funny. Danielle and I, you know, my wife Danielle and I have uh, so different strategies. You know, when somebody says to us, I am thirsty, you know, I jump up and get a glass of water. And she uh, she asks, uh, did you eat something salty? <laughs> I mean, it's completely different in terms of you know our strategies because I definitely was raised as a as a pleaser, and and she was not. And so pleasing, caretaking, feeling responsible for others, making sure that everybody somehow is okay with you, and that everybody around you is okay. That's a form of giving your power away because often the pleasers are those that are overgiving, that are just trying to make sure that everyone else's needs are met, just not their own. It's almost something that, you know, these days is uh, often seen maybe as a value, as, a, as something really that you should be. You should make sure that you're serving more to others, that you're giving more to others. But I believe when it gets out of balance and when we are draining ourselves and when we are only aiming to serve so that we somehow feel better about ourselves, that's not really service. That's actually in some ways an indirect self-service. And that's when it's the pleasing mode, giving uh, our power away or we are draining our power through it. Well, doesn't this also lead to a side effect? Let's talk about a side effect before we jump on to number two. Doesn't it lead to a side effect where we ultimately cannot figure out what we actually want? I mean, have mm -hmm. you ever been with anyone and said, gee, let's go to the movie. What would you like to go see? Oh, I don't know. Right. Uh, or what would you like to eat? Well, I don't know. Just fix something. I mean, doesn't this really lose a point to a loss of self-identity in a lot of ways? And I don't know what number two is going to be, but I think it's going to be connected to that. Oh, the ple pleaser is number two. The first one is the yeah. avoider. The second yeah, one is the, the second pleaser. The second one is the pleaser. And, and the pleaser definitely is a form of, you know, avoiding your own opinion, avoiding to showing up. But the difference between the avoider and the pleaser is that the pleaser cannot stand being alone. And the avoider rather wants to be alone, rather wants to have somehow, you know, a, a safe distance from others because people feel too scary. The pleaser needs people to feel better about him or herself. And, and there they differ. But at the end, they both try to somehow feel safer and not get judged, criticized, show, you know, looked at as not good enough through different behaviors. In some ways, you could say pleasers are a little bit more proactive, but pleasers often get lost in really knowing what they want. And 
you know, we talked at the beginning of the show about becoming a doctor. For me, that was an act of pleasing as well. And not only act of pleasing my parents just to do what they wanted me to do, but it was also an act of somehow pleasing the uh, people around us, you know, people that knew me, uh, just achieving something that, uh, you know, was remarkable or often overachievers themselves are the people that are pleasers because they want to have people being pleased with them. They want admiration. They want a sense of approval just so that they can feel better about themselves. Pleasers often don't realize what they are doing until they have pleased so much that they are completely drained and exhausted. And then often they realize, despite everything that they have given, they are still not feeling any better about themselves. Despite all these applauses and ovations they got from others, they still feel somewhat not good enough and alone. And it can be a very rude awakening for a pleaser to realize how much power they actually had given away. Well, you know, it's kind of the thing that is so counter to the pattern that you create as a pleaser, isn't it? I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, we create this pattern, and so we almost feel guilty. Let's talk about guilt. This is one of our favorite topics, isn't it? I mean, in order to break the habit of being a pleaser, you know, don't you also have to don't don't you also have to deal with the emotions that come up about feeling guilty not to get that glass of water? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's it's definitely something that gets fostered by these interesting ideas. You know, I had someone recently posting a comment on YouTube on my, one of my videos saying. Well, if I really would want to help people, I would give away my services and my books for free. And, you know, you can say, well, that's an interesting statement. Maybe, you know, that would be in the ideal world. But it is seen as, you know, when you help others, when you're supposed to support others, you are supposed to do this without any kind of benefit on your own in mind. And that's, of course, you know, something that especially the pleaser doesn't like to hear because the pleaser is already so programmed to give and to serve and, uh, you know, not to take. And that's unhealthy because we all know the analogy of, you know, sitting in the airplane and, uh, you know, the mask coming down that you have to take the mask first yourself. And we also know that when we have nothing to give, who are we of service of? Who can we actually provide anything for when we are completely drained and empty? So just for the pleaser to wake up and realize you don't really have to feel guilty when you are giving to yourself, when you're taking care of yourself, because ultimately, by your nature, you always want to support others. You always want to take care of others, but just do it when you come from a place of fullness, when you actually feel safe and comfortable and good about yourself and not when you're coming from a place of anxiety, insecurity, and feeling powerless. Wow. Uh, You know, and and part of this is really discerning that, figuring that out. Uh, Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, there are so many ways that it shows up. And learning, you know, learning about the choices that we get to make in life, right? Um, You know, somebody may be thinking, well, I've got to please my boss. If I don't please my boss, I'll lose my job. So, you right. know, there are choices that we do make, though, about who we're going to accommodate, that's the term, and what the exchange is for that. So don't we also have to consider that? Because that is not necessarily, quote, pleasing. You know, there's something that we're getting in return for what we're giving. You know, and, and that's really an, a very important point that avoiding pleasing and also the third aspect, the third way we give our power away, in themselves are very valuable things we are doing. Of course, you want to avoid, you know, walking across I-5. You want to avoid telling your colleague what you really think because sometimes it's just coming from an impulse and later on you want to, you know, you would regret it. And, of course, when your boss asks you, hey, we are in a, you know, tight spot here, can you stay longer? You want to please your boss. But when it's chronic, 
when it's your way to exist, when it's basically the only way you can identify yourself as, then it's a problem. Then you have to look at it. And unfortunately, a habit like pleasing or avoiding can actually get more into the spot where you do zip away so much of your power that you become more and more dependent on those patterns. So it is, it is a slippery slope. We have to be aware of these tendencies before they really make us, you know, end up either, you know, powerless mm-hmm. or like we talked before on autopilot because uh, we just don't feel like there is anything inside of us that can really direct the life that we want. Or we don't see a future for ourselves because we've given our power away so much and haven't learned how to create healthy boundaries that our future looks bleak in in the light of us trying to please the people around us. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to give you number three. Oh, are you ready to take your power back? Dr. Friedemann Schaub is joining us here today, and he's going to help us. So far, so good. Uh, I'm one for two. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the show. Are you feeling stuck? Do you want to be free from fears and doubts and finally feel good about yourself, but you just don't know how to get there? Dr. Schaub's Accelerated Breakthrough Program provides you with the tools and solutions to go beyond your limitations and achieve self-empowered confidence. Call for your free phone consultation at 866-903-MIND. Visit CellularWisdom.com. That's CellularWisdom.com. Tune in Thursdays at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern to Spirit Guidance Radio with Shannon Walbrand on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show with South Africa's top psychic will amaze and uplift you. Call in to receive detailed, specific answers that offer immediate solutions as Shannon interprets messages from your spirit guides. Whether it's love, business, or health, your spirit guides are ready to help. Visit ShannonWalbrand.com for more info. You are guided. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Get insider knowledge about everything that is going on at Transformation Talk Radio. Go to TransformationTalkRadio.com and enter your email to receive our newsletter. Stay updated on new hosts, inspiring guests, and good news articles from around the world. We look forward to having you join our community. What's getting your attention as physical pain or illness? Have doctors been unable to help? Consider an intuitive healing session with Christy Borst. Amazing things happen every day, sometimes with jolting awareness, and sometimes with subtle shifts aided with Christy's divine healing gift. Release that which no longer serves you. For more information and to contact Christy, visit HealingResonance.us. That's HealingResonance.us. Are you ready to move past limiting beliefs and unconscious obstacles that are holding you back from financial prosperity? Do you want to be free from debt and that feeling of being disempowered? Mary Jane Allen is a financial healer and joy creation specialist who uses her unique set of tools included in her financial healing process to help her clients move past those beliefs and fears. For more information and to contact Mary Jane, visit her website, manifestyourlifedream.com and begin your financial healing process today. Everybody, we're talking about self empowerment. Dr. Friedemann Chow joining us here today. Fabulous series that he's put together for all of us. The Empowered Self Series, Part Two The Three Most Common Ways We Give Our Power Away with Dr. Friedemann Chow. Uh, we've talked about two of them, and I think we've, have we saved the best for last? I don't know. Well, it's Tell the one the that I think way. is 
for many people the most confusing because they actually do feel empowered when they are, in fact, giving their power away. And these are the people that are the controllers, you know, the people that are feeling, you know, they are the authority, the ones that, uh, you know, micromanage their environment, always make sure that everything is going their way, enforcing rules and uh, their ideas, and sometimes with anger and threats and punishment. So, you know, that's definitely something that when you are a controller, when you do express yourself with anger and you instill fear and insecurity into others, you could have the illusion of empowerment. But it is not real empowerment because you are completely dependent on how other people are reacting. You're dependent on the environment being in your control. And again, as soon as there is something externally making you dependent on whether you feel good and safe or not, you're ultimately disempowered or on the way to give your power away. So one of the things that I think that, you know, we can talk about is how control actually shows up. Because, again, Mm -hmm. I think it's like the other two. I think, you know, we get immersed in avoidance, so we don't know we're in avoidance. We think it's normal. Uh, we're so used to people-pleasing that when we don't, we feel guilty, like we're not doing enough, right? And now we're talking about something that is, I think, the most baffling of all, right? This idea of control. But you know what I'm really struck by? I'm struck by the serenity prayer. And anybody Mm -hmm. that's ever heard the serenity prayer, you know, it, it talks about, you know, having the ability to accept the things that you you know, cannot change, right? right, and the courage to change the things you can. And so the third part of the prayer is really the most interesting, and the wisdom to know the difference. This is the trick with control, right? Well, I think, you know, in, in, in essence, absolutely yes, because control is something that, you know, we strive for, we... You know, we especially, you know, as we said, uh, the beginning of all these patterns is in our childhood. And when you had a very controlling parent, a very authoritarian figure in your life, at some point when you're an adult, you just want to turn the tables and then you want to be like this person because that was basically the symbol or the the person who was... uh, showing you what being empowered and what being in control is all about and how to do it. What, you know, and this is something I often see with clients that, you know, had a very domineering father or mother, what they don't realize until they really look underneath this mask of power, this mask of control, that these people inside of them are actually really, really scared. I mean, most controllers, most actually self-declared, you know, anger freaks, people that really know, well, you know, I have really a problem with micromanagement or with basically authority and trying to always enforce my own authority on others. They admit that this comes not from feeling so great about themselves or feeling so confident. It comes from a deep-seated fear and insecurity. And ultimately, it comes from a feeling of not being lovable or not feeling good enough. And their way to deal with their own vulnerability is basically to create this sense of empowerment because they are so scared to show to others what's really going on underneath. And and so in some ways, the, the controllers are scared and afraid of being alone. And so they are controlling others in order for them to somehow have a hold on them. They are scared and afraid of certain things just not being in their control because that could mean that something bad's going to happen. So they are micromanaging everything. You know, and that's where the controller is probably losing power the most quickly because it is very clear to all of us We cannot control every aspect of our life, and especially we cannot control other people. 
And so what happens with the controller is that they become more frustrated and more angry, and every anger and every frustration ends up with letting out more and more of the power, and eventually there is a true feeling of helplessness and depression that controllers easily can slip into. So, you know, part of this is also getting back to the topic of why is it even important to become self-empowered? And I, I think this is really, you know, now that we've, we've talked about three ways that, um, you know, we can be mindful of right now, but there's really a punchline here, Dr. Schaub, and that is why do we want to know this? What is it that self-empowerment does for us? Well, I think when you feel truly self-empowered, you're not only feeling so much more secure and safe within yourself. You are also so much more independent of the circumstances that you're in because you really feel that you are in charge of creating your life. You're clear about your choices. You're clear about what you want. And you're also clear about the potential and the power that you have within. That's the moment when you know, I can actually reach this level of wisdom to know, based on my potential, what I can change and what I cannot. And because I do feel safe within myself, I am okay with the things I cannot change. And I am okay with other people having their own opinion and maybe judging me or criticizing me because I know it is not truly a reflection on myself. I know who I am. Self-empowerment is not imposing power on your environment. Self-empowerment is ultimately being at peace with yourself and feeling that there is a level of love and appreciation for yourself that allows you then also to do good in the world. You know, we are at a time in our world, I think, where we all need to be empowered to make this world a better place, a sustainable place. So we can no longer give our power away freely just because it's more comfortable or these are the subconscious patterns we have been falling into. I think each and every one of us has a certain gift and a certain wisdom to share with the world But in order to be able to do that, we need to find the power inside of us. And that gives us the permission to really show up as big as we can. Well, you know, what a great show. I mean, this is really, uh, it's really very important, especially, you know, when we're looking at living the lives we desire. And truly, you know, being able to leave depression behind and say yes to joy. Thank you so much for the show today. Also, would you let folks know how they can find you on Facebook, your social media? And I, and one last question, what's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with here today? You know, for me, it just feels that this show was about letting go of the illusion that uh, we don't have a choice and realize, yes, when I understand the patterns, how I lose my power, I can actually do something to stop this drainage. And, and just the awareness in itself is already the first step to empowerment. And you can find out more about the work I'm offering either at the fear and anxiety solution.com or cellularwisdom.com. They're also little symbols uh, for Twitter, social media things, and uh, we want to get uh, updated on what's going on in my world, please join. All right. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, everyone, CellularWisdom.com. Give out your 800 number again for those folks that want to set up a free consultation with you as well. It's 866-903-MIND, M-I-N-D. This is 6463. All right. Dr. Friedemann Schaub, everyone, thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. Again, please go ahead and check our social media, Facebook, the Dr. Pat Show.com, Twitter, oh, excuse me, Facebook, the Dr. Pat Show, Twitter, the Dr. Pat Show. And remember, this is really our birthright, to be free, to be self-empowered, and to live a life of joy and abundance. Thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. We'll see you next time on the show. Are you feeling stuck? 
Do you want to be free from fears and doubts and finally feel good about yourself, but you just don't know how to get there? Dr. Schaub's Accelerated Breakthrough Program provides you with the tools and solutions to go beyond your limitations and achieve self-empowered confidence. Call for your free phone consultation at 866-903-MIND. Visit CellularWisdom.com. That's CellularWisdom.com. Where do you desire to go in life? How do you plan to get there? Are you only looking outside yourself for the answers? What if you use your soul's wisdom to lead the way? So what is the soul and how do you access its wisdom? Soul Suitcase with Victoria Cohen will unpack these questions and help you tap into and trust your own inner voice to solve everyday problems. Your Soul Suitcase is a treasure chest of wisdom inside you waiting to be discovered. Listen to Soul Suitcase on TransformationTalkRadio.com and discover how awakening to your inner voice transforms your life. Are you ready to move past limiting beliefs and unconscious obstacles that are holding you back from financial prosperity? Do you want to be free from debt and that feeling of being disempowered? Mary Jane Allen is a financial healer and joy creation specialist who uses her unique set of tools included in her financial healing process to help her clients move past those beliefs and fears. For more information and to contact Mary Jane, visit her website, manifestyourlifedream.com and begin your financial healing process today. What's getting your attention as physical pain or illness? Have doctors been unable to help? Consider an intuitive healing session with Christy Borst. Amazing things happen every day, sometimes with jolting awareness, and sometimes with subtle shifts aided with Christy's divine healing gift. Release that which no longer serves you. For more information and to contact Christy, visit HealingResonance.us. That's HealingResonance.us. Are you ready to give your home a fresh look but don't want to do the work? Help is a phone call away. Kathy's Handy is a full-service general contracting company specializing in home improvement, remodeling, and repairs. Kathy's Handy are specialists in kitchens, baths, fireplace makeovers, and finished carpentry, and they partner with other amazing specialty subcontractors needed to complete any job. Friendly, energetic, and dependable with an impeccable reputation to get the job done while keeping you as comfortable as possible during the transformation of your home is the hallmark of Kathy's Handy. Call Kathy now for a free estimate. 206-715-8126. That's 206-715-8126. And visit kathyshandy.com for a complete view of possibilities for your home. Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all. A healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. Hi, this is Dr. Darvish. If you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms, you will find answers here at Holistic Medical Center. Our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally. We transform lives from within. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. What if the world doesn't function the way we've been told? What if we truly can bend the laws of physical reality? What if we can end limitation? What if weird were the coolest thing you could be? And what if it's time for a totally different reality? Are you ready to create it? Are you ready to dream as big as you dare? Hi, my name is Dane here. 13 years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything in my life changed for me. This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Newton, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Gandhi, Galileo, and Aristotle all knew to be true. It's not about the answer. It's about being the question, always. It's about truly being you, whatever that looks like, and changing this world. Is now the time? Start by signing up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. That's beingyouclass.com. What if you are the gift and the change this world requires? Beingyouclass.com Listen to the Yo! Andrew News talk show every Tuesday night at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. More info where to listen? www.yoandrewnts.com slash listen. Don't get your message lost in the mail. Email us with this address, yoandrew at yoandrewnts.com. How about tweet Yo! Andrew at andrewtweetgeo. Taking a picture is easy. Instagram us today at Yo Andrew NTS. 